Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we are going to briefly discuss the roles glial cells have in the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system that you need to know for the MCAT. We are also going to close by looking at some of the most important neurodegenerative diseases you need to know for the MCAT. Let's start today by taking a look at astrocytes. These cells help form the blood-brain barrier, which is important for preventing solutes in the blood from getting into the brain. Let's take a look at what the blood-brain barrier looks like. So essentially, we just have some blood vessels. Let's start by drawing in our blood vessels. These blood vessels normally allow for a free diffusion of solutes in and out throughout the rest of the body. But we can't have this happening in the brain. So what are we going to do? What we see happen is that astrocytes use their feet to cover the blood vessels. And it looks something like this, where the circle is the cell body, those little spindly lines are the dendrites, and astrocytes are going to cover the whole thing with their feet and not allow for solutes to get in and out. So you can imagine then if these are tight together, there is no way for solutes to get in. They just get bounced off. They stay inside the blood vessel and can still share their nutrients in other parts of the body. But in the brain, it is all controlled through the astrocyte. If the astrocyte doesn't want it to come into the brain, it won't come into the brain. The feet of the astrocytes are technically called end feet. Astrocytes form the blood-brain barrier by forming tight junctions with these end feet. And the AAMC loves to test this by asking what type of cell is injured when foreign substances that are typically excluded from the central nervous system are found in the brain. Well, if your astrocytes are dead, they're not going to be regulating the composition of fluid in the brain very well anymore. It's just going to be free-flowing out of the blood vessels. Another important glial cell to know are ependymal cells. Another important glial cell to know are ependymal cells. These cells play a role in regulating cerebral spinal fluid in the central nervous system. These cells line fluid-filled cavities in the brain. Another key cell to know are called microglia. Microglia are like the brain's immune system and trash service all rolled into one. They help digest waste as well as fight off invaders. Microglia have to be activated before they turn into an immune cell that begins eating away at bacteria that have invaded the brain or viruses that have invaded the brain. This is a very critical system to maintaining the health and homeostasis of the brain. Well, these are all important cell types. The most important and often tested type of glial cell by far that you need to know for the MCAT are those that make myelin. My there are two types of cells that produce myelin in the nervous system. We have Schwann cells in the peripheral nervous system and oligodendrocytes, which make myelin in the central nervous system. The difference between these are that it takes many, many Schwann cells to myelate a single neuron. So let's draw what this looks like. So I'm going to draw again a really simple neuron here, starting with a circle for the soma or cell body. And down, I'm drawing an axon and it's a little foot. Now let's call these little hairs the dendrites. So a Schwann cell, if we zoom in here, these are going to wrap around the neurons in a fashion similar to this. So it takes many tens to hundreds of Schwann cells to myelate a single neuron, depending how long that axon is, right? And the axon length is all dependent on what neurons are trying to be connected. I'm also going to put in a little nucleus for them because they have a nucleus. They are alive. They're a cell just like the neuron. They're just very small. And the green myelin here helps speed up the conduction of an action potential. This is because as we're going down, the action potential can skip over the myelin parts and just continue down through the axon itself. This mode of conduction is called stultatory conduction. This means jumping. The action potential is jumping down. It's skipping the myelinated portions. So now let's take a look at what an oligodendrocyte looks like. An oligodendrocyte is able to myelinate multiple different neurons. So for our drawing, we need to now draw multiple different neurons. So I'll quickly do that. I'm not going to label them this time. So let's just say we have two neurons here. An oligodendrocyte is, again, its own cell. So I'm going to give it a little nucleus. I'm going to give it a soma. And the way it works is it has these projections that come out and myelinate. I'm going to myelinate multiple portions of the same neuron as well as able to do other neurons. 
And usually it takes more than just one oligodendrocyte. So I'm going to just draw two in here. You know, maybe this one is going to help crisscross here, my line over there. It's going to come help over here. And just like in the Schwann cells, these are made of myelin. They're doing the exact same thing. It's just speeding up that action potential. The reason myelin is so important is because of the speeding up of transmission through saltatory conduction. When there isn't enough myelin due to lack of secretion or a demyeling disease that maybe kills these oligodendrocytes, such as in multiple sclerosis, well, then these neural signals can't travel quickly enough to run the brain. And this leads to severe symptoms and often death. Other common neurodegenerative diseases that you need to know for the MCAT are Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. We'll briefly talk about those. Alzheimer's, or Alzheimer's disease, AD, is thought to occur due to a mixture of genetic factors, such as brain atrophy, a decrease in acetylcholine-producing cells that link to the hippocampus, and an excess of misfolded beta amyloid. It's a type of protein. Alzheimer's is a type of dementia that causes memory loss as its main symptom. The other big disease you need to know for the MCAT is called Parkinson's disease, or PD. Parkinson's is caused by a death in dopaminergic cells in the substantia Niagara. Some common symptoms you should be aware of are bradykinesia, brady meaning slow, and kinesia meaning movement. Putting them together, bradykinesia, slow movement. Also, a resting tremor, a pill-rolling tremor, and mask-like facies, as well as cogwheel rigidity and a shuffling gait are all classic signs that you actually need to know for the MCAT, the AAMC will ask you to diagnose Parkinson's based on these symptoms. Symptoms all come because of those dying dopaminergic cells. It's producing less dopamine. So then it makes sense that the current best treatment used to treat Parkinson's is by using dopamine precursors like L-DOPA, which turns into dopamine once it gets into the brain. But unfortunately, L-DOPA does not completely cure Parkinson's disease. It just lessens the symptoms for some time. Similarly, Alzheimer's disease, there is no cure for it. There are some treatments that can help address some of those symptoms, but they are both fatal diseases. In summary, astrocytes help form the blood-brain barrier, ependymal cells regulate CSF levels, microglia fight pathogens and clear waste, Schwann cells myelinate neurons in the peripheral nervous system, and oligodendrocytes myelinate neurons in the central nervous system. Thank you so much for watching our video on glial cells and common neurodegenerative diseases, and I will see you next time. We are also going to close by looking at some of the most important neurodegenerative diseases you need to know for the MCAT.